Hello, you're watching the Hub Online Network. My name is Gareth, and we got a jam-packed show for you today. Hope you had a good weekend. Let's get going. It is four o'clock on March 30th, and I gotta say happy birthday to my brother. Um, he's a few years older than I am, but happy birthday, and hope you have a good one. I'll call you after this show. If you are at home and watching, you can call me at 250-457-0538, and I'll take your calls live on air. I do have a few calls actually scheduled today, um, so if I don't answer, I will call you back and uh, we'll go from there. So again, that's 250-457-0538. And until our first caller does call in, let's get going. Um, so I wanted to actually start off with a few personal stories that I've had over the last few days. Uh, I have had a few um, health, not health issues, but health appointments that I had to go to, uh, both down at the coast and in Kamloops. So I wanna give a little bit of a uh, comparison to how it's going down at the coast versus Kamloops and here actually. So to start off, last week I had a, just to get some routine blood work done at our Ashcroft Health site. Uh, that went very well. Uh, interest, so now it's very, we'll get into the differences. So it's interesting what's going on at Ashcroft. Uh, the system that they have is you go up to the door, they tell you, uh, instead of taking a number, they tell you a time to come back. Uh, so I was there at 8.20, and they told me to come back at 9.12. That was my appointment time to get my blood work done. Uh, so you don't have to take a number. They have spaced out chairs in the lobby. Um, I thought that was great. So I just went and sat out in my car, waited for my time, went back in, got my blood work, barely saw anyone. It was awesome. And thank you for the nursing staff and the blood takers. You guys are doing great. I'm sure that this is a stressful time for you. So keep it up. You're rocking it. Uh, then on Friday, so this is actually going to be covering a couple of different things. So the reason that I read off of paper, I tried reading off of a teleprompter last week, but the reason I'm reading off of paper is about a month ago I had eye surgery. Uh, so I can't see anything really out of this eye yet. I'm still recovering from that. So I read off of paper too because it's a little bit closer and I can read it better. Um, but I had to have a checkup on Friday with my eye doctor. So I didn't want to go down to the coast, but I had to go down to the coast. So I went down, saw my eye doctor in his uh, uh, doctor's office. And so what they had set up there was six feet of spacing was tape. So you, when there was a lineup of people, you walked in, you waited your six feet apart, you moved up, moved up, six feet away from the desk. You had to stand, give your information, and then they asked you to wait. Uh, they had chairs spaced out six feet apart. There were about uh, half a dozen people in the uh, waiting room. Um, uh, the <laughs> in, in, an interesting anecdote from this was, I'm waiting for my turn to go in to have my eyes checked, and this older lady came in that couldn't hear very well, and I guess she wasn't understanding what the tape was for, so she started going right for the counter, and the woman, the receptionist, was like, stop, stop, stop! And she was yelling at this old woman, older woman, it was, uh, if it wasn't such a crazy time, it would be funny. Um, so finally the, the older woman figured out what was going on and she stopped at the appropriate place. But man, it was, anyway, it was crazy. So then my doctor checks out my eye and he said that he couldn't quite tell whether the surgery went well or not because there was too much blood, sorry, over the TMI. But there was too much blood in my eye. So I actually had to go to Surrey Memorial Hospital to get an ultrasound done on my eye. Now I did not want to go there at all, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So I go down to Surrey Memorial Hospital and uh, what they were doing there was you walked in and they actually walked me to where I had to go so I didn't have to touch, uh, touch anything. Um, and every, every time I saw a hand sanitizer pump, I sanitized my hands. Um, but it was interesting to be taken to where I had to be. There weren't very many people in the building. Um, but they made sure that you didn't go, you didn't stray from the path. And once I saw my doctor, I was able to get my ultrasound done and everything was good. Um, but, so that was interesting. On the way home, uh, we needed to get an oil change. So I asked my wife to drop me off at a grocery store. So I went to the superstore in Chilliwack. And that was an interesting uh, 
endeavor. So there was a lineup outside of the grocery store that went down to the end of the building. I haven't done a big, uh, big city grocery shop yet. I've been very fortunate to be able to just go to Safety Mart in Ashcroft. And so anyway, it took me about 10 minutes to get into the building. And when I got in, there was a bunch of security there uh, and people were just sort of dashing from spot to spot to spot. Lots of pseudo panic going on. Um, and certain things were just empty. So if there's still no toilet paper, still no paper towel, uh, all the disinfectants were gone, all the Lysol wipes were gone, anything that you could get to bake was gone, so all the butter was gone, uh, yeast was gone, lots, most of the, not about 95% of the flour was gone. There's still a little bit of flour there. Uh, most of the pre-packaged, um, you know, cakes, muffins, that sort of stuff was gone. So. It's interesting to see people uh, not, I didn't see anybody necessarily fighting over things, but people were definitely had high tempers. Um, the lineup for the till, so the tills were at the front of the store, and the lineup went down to the end of the building and then down to the end where the fish were. So it was two walls that you sort of had to wait through. Um, and any time that someone tried to get in to grab, because you're, so we were stationed over by like the milk and the butter and stuff, stuff like that. So when people wanted something that you were standing in front of, you had to let them in. People in the line did not like you doing that. So there was a little bit of animosity there. Um, people that wanted to just walk through the till, they didn't have anything in their hands, they just wanted to get out of the store, weren't allowed to do that. Uh, the process at the till itself uh, was, uh, the person in front of you, so you were allowed to walk up and have your buggy of stuff. The person in front of you had to be completely done before you even thought about putting your groceries on the belt. Uh, before you could do that, they had to wipe down every surface and then you were able to put your stuff onto the belt. Very professional though, uh, great job Chilliwack staff at the Superstore, you guys were tremendous. Uh, then this morning, so then that was all good, we went home, everything was fine. This morning I had to get a CT scan done in Kamloops. So we go into Kamloops um, and on the way into the hospital, they actually took my temperature. So they were screening everybody for temperature, asking, if, asking a bunch of questions. Uh, so that was different. So this is why I'm saying a contrast. So this was different from what was going on down in Surrey Memorial because they weren't screening for that kind of thing. And then I had my CT scan there was nobody there, so they were only bringing in the uh, really important cases. Um, I did have an opportunity to chat with someone while I was waiting, uh, an older lady and her husband. Her husband was just is still dealing with lymphoma. I had lymphoma last year, so I know what this is about. Um, so he's still getting updated chemo treatments. So I'm surprised that they asked uh, him to come in, but I guess it was important enough. Um, but she was saying that she's worried about his health, her health, having to go into the hospital. She's a retired nurse, so she's happy that she doesn't have to work necessarily anymore. Um, but anyway, it was a very cool conversation with her. And one thing that's happening right now is a lot of nurses and doctors are coming out of retirement to help with what's going on. So thank you to all of you who have done that. Anyway, so um, that was my experience in those few places that I went to. Uh, please let, let us know about your experiences if you've had to go to the hospital at HON at ashcrofthub.com and I'll read out what you guys have had to go through there. Anyway, uh, so that's just a few things that I had gone through in the last little while. Now today I was at the pharmacy and was asked to provide a little information and clarification uh, the IDA Pharmacy in Ashcroft is open Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. There is a rumor going around town that the pharmacy is closed indefinitely. It is not. It is very open. However, it is closed on Saturdays to give the pharmacist a little bit of a deserved rest. Uh, they also ask that you try to give up to two days uh, uh, notice for your prescription if you can. Uh, if they have what you need, it probably won't take the two days. Uh, but be patient and give them some time if you can. Personally, thank you, IDA. You guys are doing awesome. Now, as for the latest numbers in all of this, I'll talk about the world, and then I'll talk about the update from Bonnie Henry and um, Adrian Dix. So right now, around the world, we have 
784,975 cases. There are currently 37,680 deaths with 26,905 serious cases, but a reassuring total of 165,482 recovered patients. And that's the important number here is the 165,482 total recovered cases. If that is you, congratulations. Uh, hopefully you feel better if you have, feel better soon if you're not feeling great already. Um, now provincially, and in that what that amounts to is, uh, so as of the latest numbers released on March 30th, there are a total of 970 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in BC alone. Uh, the cases span all over BC regions, 472 in Vancouver, uh, 323 in Fraser Health, 67 on the island, 94 in Interior Health, and 14 in Northern Health. Uh, 19 people have died in total, and 106 are in hospital, with 60 being in, in intensive care, with a whopping 469 cases being recovered. As of March 27th, 36,643 individuals have been tested in BC, and the testing capacity in BC has increased to approximately 3,500 tests being done across the province per day. Um, so that's, uh, they're ramping up the testing as far as everything I'm reading can, I can tell. So that is awesome. We do also have Jessica at home, uh, talking about, or covering all of our comments and questions. So if, um, if you have questions or anything like that, you can ask Jessica and she will get your answers back to you. She'll also be providing some extra links and stuff as I go through, uh, this material. So as more cases of COVID-19 are identified in BC interior every day, the question of where those cases are specifically starts to weigh more heavily. While, it won't while they won't release numbers on a city-to-city -city basis, the Interior Health Authority said that you should assume that COVID-19 is circulating in your community and act accordingly by following the advice of the provincial health officer. That is a very good point. Just assume that everybody's got it and you don't want it. Um, a note from the health uh, a note to the healthcare workers from MLA Jackie Taggart. Uh, she says, "Thank you for all of our healthcare workers, not only for the skills you bring to your job, but for the care and compassion you share and with your loved ones." Uh, so that's from Jackie Taggart via Twitter. Um, Jackie Taggart is doing all she can on the provincial level of government, and our local MLA is working very hard. Um, we get a little bit, of, a couple little updates from her in every now and again, but hopefully we'll have a chance to talk with her soon. Um, remember that from 11 a.m. to noon every weekday, Mayor Tallarico and CAO Dalson will be available to answer questions over the phone. That phone number is 250-457-6237, or you can email admin at cashcreek.info again. Tallarico and CAO Dalson will be available to answer questions over the phone in Cash Creek. Uh, an, up, an update from Home Hardware. We are committed to the health and safety of our staff and customers and are working within the guidelines of government and health authorities to ensure that we are acting as responsible corporate citizens. With this in mind, we are limiting the amount of people in the store to one at uh, one time to six people. We ask that you keep your six foot distance from staff and customers. And if you have been sick or have been in contact with someone that is sick, please stay at home. Uh, phone in items you need if you live in Ashcroft, Cash Creek area, and we will deliver your items for free of charge with a minimum $20 purchase. We can also meet outside with you. Uh, um, sorry, we can also meet outside with your phone in order if you prefer to go for a drive. We want to be as helpful as we can given the situation. We hope you're staying safe. Thank you. Now, home hardware has been deemed a essential service. So has uh, Lord Co. in Cash Creek, to my understanding. Um, so, but please, in home hardware's case, six person limit, six foot distance. And thank you to home hardware and Lord Co. You guys are rocking it as well. Uh, the Ashcroft Bakery has unfortunately closed its doors as of Friday last week. I know that uh, 
Debbie Tui was really debating what to do, but unfortunately they had to close their doors. Um, there is an update, however, from the Justin Trudeau's um, daily speech from this morning. So he, and not that the bakery can take advantage of this, but just as an update. So Justin Trudeau says, stay home. Uh, the feds have a plan for wage subsidy. The government will cover 75% of wages if your business can prove that you've lost at least 30% of business due to COVID-19, um, which pretty much counts for everyone at this point. Um, it does not matter the number of, of employees that you have. Uh, companies and charities can apply for this, 75% wage uh, subsidy. Uh, this will cover your first $58,700 that you earn. Um, and this will be backdated to March 15th. There, uh, there will be consequences for any businesses trying to take advantage of this. I don't know how you would take advantage of this, but um, if you're caught taking advantage of this subsidy, you will have consequences. Uh, so that is from the government. And so if you are someone like the bakery and you would like to uh, maybe reopen your doors, I don't know if it's possible, um, you can have your wages 75% covered by the government. And there you are. Um, they're calling it the, do I have it here? I don't have it here, I'm sorry. I thought I had the name of this subsidy in hand, but I don't. Uh, so there will also be the Canadian Armed Forces are geared up to help. Um, no province at this time has asked for the military to come in to help, but the, gov the military is on standby and is geared up to move in when necessary. So really those are the big two takeaways from this morning's meeting with Justin Trudeau. Um, so take that as you see fit. Uh, while the TNRD, re okay, so the, the TNRD is requesting people to hold off as much as possible until normal operations can be resumed at the landfills and eco depots. Everyone who can, everyone who comes to any TNRD transfer station or eco depot will be allowed to dump normally, except materials including yard waste. They're asking people to use good judgment and, and observe social distancing. Although we are calling it physical distancing now. Apparently social distancing was confusing people um, to say stop socializing. We don't want you to stop socializing. We just need you to physically keep your distance. Um, so physically distancing in order to maintain a safe environment for everyone. If you can hold off on taking things to the transfer station, please do so. And if you can't, take it along as normal. But Use your judgment. All those branches that you've trimmed and leaves that you've raked is fine. The old stove or armchair or a set of tires that's been sitting there for several months, this probably won't be a huge inconvenience to you to hang on to them for a little while longer. Uh, so they are saying that you can bring in yard waste if you have to, um, but if you don't have to, please hang on to it. Everything else, just hang on to it. If it's already been sitting there for a few months, it can probably sit there for a few months more. The Grub Steak in Cash Creek has changed its hours from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, the Safety Mart. Now, I read this bit last week, but I'm going to read it again. Uh, so they have plexiglass on all of their tills now, thanks to Quality Glass in Ashcroft. And thank you for Quality Glass for doing that. Um, but a few notes to pass along from Safety Mart. Practice social distancing, physical distancing. Uh, please keep at least six feet away from each other in their store. When shopping, if able to please leave the family at home and only send one person at a time. Don't treat your shopping like a social outing. Uh, no reusable bags allowed in the store. No bottle returns until further notice. That does not mean don't bring in the Caribou clear bottles, this just means cans and bottles that you want to change for money. You can't bring those in. Please still bring in your Caribou clear bottles. Caribou clear will still be uh, bringing bottles all the time. And in Cash Creek, now that the Jade Shop is closed, you can get your bottles at the uh, grub stick. Um, please respect the close sign on the cashier tills uh, when, they, everybody, when people are on a break. Um, we are always available to answer any questions, but if possible, limit calls to the store as our cashiers are experiencing high volumes. 
Now, one last note to those who have traveled outside the country and have returned to self-quarantine. Our staff, thank you and appreciate you for staying home and finding other means to shop during your 14 days. That being said, Esther Lang is still, she has lots of volunteers lined up to be able to help people shop. Um, she, to my understanding, she hasn't gotten too many calls to help people, but she has lots of volunteers. So if you are in that boat and you need something, Esther Lang is the person to call. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about Esther and a few other people a little bit later on in the show. Um, both Ashcroft and Cash Creek have suspended their volunteer firefighter practices. They are still available as an emergency service, but their practices are suspended at this time. Sam's Diner is still open for takeout and in fact has a takeout window on the outside of the building so you don't have to go in, just give them a call. Um, I did try this service, it was pretty interesting to do. Uh, their window is right beside where their cashier usually is, uh, so it's a great location, great spot to just get the food, pay and leave, you don't got to go in. So good jobs for, to Sam's for staying consistent and finding a way to stay open during this time. And if you are capable of supporting small businesses, please do so, including Sam's Diner. Um, that would be great. I still haven't heard too much about the Central if they're still open. I'm assuming they are because I haven't heard anything. Uh, it's probably a takeout order thing. I uh, don't see Ogesh wanting to close down. Um, but the River Inn is closed for now, just until the craziness ends for a bit. Uh, so River Inn is closed. Uh, there is currently a new app and uh, self-assessment tool online. Um, I've talked about the self-assessment tool a couple of times. You can find it at covid19.thrive.health and um, it just gives you a way to monitor your symptoms if you have any. And if you have the symptoms that they talk about, uh, you can click through a couple of different options. It usually asks you to um, call 811 if you feel that you have symptoms of COVID-19 and they'll explain to you where to go from there. Um, I have heard a lot of stories about 811 taking it some time to get through to a, a nurse. So um, if you're calling, please expect to wait. Uh, my sister was had an issue over the weekend, not with COVID, uh, but she ended up talking with someone via tele health. Uh, so she talked to a doctor over the phone um, with a video appointment and she got the prescription that she needed and that kind of stuff. So there is that option as well. We live in such amazing current times, don't we? Uh, again, you can call me at 250-457-0538 and I'll take your call. Uh, what else do we got? There is a really good Facebook page that I'm a part of. It's the Ash Cash Clinton COVID-19 Community Response Board. Um, there's, lots of there's lots of tools, tips, and tricks to help you get through this interesting time. Uh, they have several updates throughout the day, um, lots of different people sharing stuff. I will say that you have to be kind of wary about the information that you do get from uh, online sources. Uh, in my experience so far, about 45% of it is correct, and the other 45% the other of it is just what people are making up. It seems like a large number, because it is. Um, so take what you find online with a grain of salt. Find it at other sources before you just do. Uh, there are, f I, I talked about this last week, um, but there's a few cases of this happening. Um, so there's a there was a couple in the States who heard the president talk about a drug, uh, a malaria drug that they want to test, uh, which they're moving forward with in testing right now. Um, anyway, this couple found a name that was very similar to what the president was talking about on fish tank cleaner in their house. And so they thought that it would help them not get COVID-19. So they drank the fish tank cleaner. They both got sick. One of them died. Do not take anything without your doctor's approval. Uh, just assume that it's bad for you if you just come across random stuff in your house. Um, again, don't just take it. Talk to your doctor first. Um, now, talking about Esther, there is a group of uh, village leaders that have come sort of come together and they're coming up with a plan on how to best support people um, in our area. When it, time, when it comes time to do so. 
Uh, I don't want to give out the names, uh, but I was I was a part of this Zoom this meeting over Zoom uh, last week. So that is something that is coming up uh, shortly. Um, hopefully, in the next day or so, we'll have a concrete way of being able to support people who are stuck at home and can't get out of the house. Um, so stay untuned for that. Uh, what do we got? Oh yeah, so, and I noticed this today when I was at the hospital in Kamloops, they have suspended all pay parking, I'm assuming because they don't want people touching all the keypads. And so if you have to go into the hospital for anything, you don't have to pay anymore. Um, so that is a great, and this is interior health wide. Um, so no hospital's interior health will make you pay for going there and parking. So that's great. Um, to the Ashcroft, Cash Creek, Clinton, and area residents uh, and all others that may attend the Ashcroft Emergency Department from March 27th on, all patients arriving to the emergency department will be screening over the outside entry intercom for emergent urgency of visits, symptoms such as fever, cough, and shortness of breath. You will then be directed accordingly. So if you go to the hospital over the weekend, when our emergency room is open, uh, they will be screening patients at that uh, intercom at the sliding door. So be prepared for that if you have to use the emergency services over the weekend. Uh, public notice from Cash Creek. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the deadline for the 10% discount on utility payments has been extended until May 31st. This will be reassessed again as we get closer to that date. Any residents over the age of 65... Oh, I have a call. I have a call. Hello, this is Gareth, and you're online with uh, the Hub Online Network. Hey, Gareth, David here. Oh, hello, David. This is David Dirksen calling from Ashcroft. How are you today? I'm doing good, thank you. Wonderful. So what's new and exciting in your world? cold and windy today. Oh, yeah. And uh, so what, uh, what, what are you calling for? Oh, uh, I just wanted to, uh, uh, you were updating on, on health in the region. I just wanted to say that uh, the doctors are really appreciating the support from the community and that they are uh, uh, doing a lot of things that have been in planning stages for, for the last couple of years. So they are able to do telehealth now. And uh, if you have a concern and are thinking you need an appointment, to, to call the clinic and they will uh, 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 triage it over the phone. And then if, if it is necessary for you to go in, they will make arrangements so that you can go in and uh, be properly uh, uh uh, distance from other patients and things like that and uh, they they really are uh, the staff has been uh, really well trained and is is working on this very well and uh, from the people that I've heard that have uh, been in it has worked really well oh wonderful um, are they do you know if they're taking any sort of walk-ins In order that they can evaluate the situation and do that, uh, they uh, are doing the ER uh, outside first to make sure that they're doing the screening and stuff and then uh, taking those in as needed. Okay. Well, that's, that, that's good to know. Um, do they have any, and how are the doctors themselves doing? small community and, and our current uh, doctor's uh, numbers, and so it's, uh, uh, they're, they're doing well. They are, like everyone else, doing the social distancing, and so therefore they aren't getting out and about the community uh, very much at all. Uh, and they're really appreciative of all the people in the community who are doing the social distancing and are, are helping keep this from becoming one of the hot spots in the province. Awesome. Is there anything other than social distancing that we can do to support our doctors? 
want to be there for the people who have have appropriate needs. So please do call the clinic. Uh, most and be aware that uh, likely uh, fourteen people will all call at the same time. <laughs> be patient and and call back because I believe there's only three lines at the clinic. So uh, that that might not work. But uh, they are they are handling things very well and uh, they do want to. Be able to help the patients, but uh, be aware that if it's busy, to, to simply call back. And uh, they are doing a lot of follow-up calls there uh, to to patients directly, so that they can be in touch and 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 support them. Awesome. Um, well, thank you very much for phoning, David. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Well, uh, yeah, I'd just like to say that uh, the churches in town have all uh, stopped, but. St. Albans is, uh, thanks to the support of the Hub Online Network, St. Albans is broadcasting uh, while taping and and putting up their their Sunday services, and that will continue uh, with uh, service for Palm Sunday and also a service for Easter Sunday. Now that's a very good point. Um, yes, we're going to be doing that with the, the help of myself and uh, David and a few other uh, handy people at St. Albans. So if you're looking for a church service, check us out on Sundays uh, for the next few weeks. Um, Great. And go ahead. I'd like to thank the Hub Network for, for helping St. Albans uh, make that available to the community. Well, my pleasure. Thank you very much for letting me come in and uh, film your services. Okay. Well, have a good day and keep up the good work here. All right. Right on, David. Thanks for phoning in. I really appreciate that. Okay, bye now. All right, bye. And that was David Dirksen, an uh, Ashcroft uh, citizen. He makes the um, coffee, the beans roasted right coffee. So if you're looking for a good coffee to grind up at home, check out beans roasted right. Not, hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so yes, the, oh, speaking of doctors and stuff, down at the coast, I saw a cool uh, video, a couple of videos about this. Um, in support of the doctors at 7 o'clock every night, everybody goes out, not everybody goes outside, but people go on their porches and stuff and just bang pots and pans and give a big yell for the uh, doctors at the hospital. We might be a little bit too spaced out for that, for that, for that to be uh, reached to them, but if you live by any of the doctors that you know of, um, go outside at 7 o'clock at night, bang your pots and pans, let them know that you appreciate them, and we'll go from there. Oh, we got another call. Hello, this is the Hub Online Network. How, how are you doing? I'm good, Gareth. It's Barbara Rudin here. How, uh, how, how are you holding up? Oh, I'm living the dream, Barbara. I'm living the dream. Living the dream. Excellent. <laughs> so we have Mayor Barbara Rodin on the phone now. So what's new and exciting in your world? Uh, well, I guess a new and exciting uh, update today from the TNRD, and you've already touched on it, was about the, uh, the yard waste. There was uh, something that came out from them last week saying, please don't take your yard waste to the, the TNRD transfer stations. But they're realizing that a lot of people are out there in their yards. They, uh, I've had a number of people contact me. I contacted the TNRD this morning, and they said that they were, they were coming out and just saying to people, use common sense. If you're out there, you've got bags of leaves, you've got yard waste, branches, etc. You know, feel free to take them up to the, to the transfer station. Just observe social distancing and... and as I said, somewhere else, if you've got that old sofa that's been in the basement for six months that you want to take up to the transfer station, it probably can live where it is for another little while, but things like yard waste, people want to get rid of it, so so take it on up to the, the transfer station. Right. It's very nice that they're doing that because, um, I mean, even for myself, we have now been sort of stockpiling all of the yard waste that we have in the back corner, um, so it'll be nice to be able to get rid of that. So thank, thank you to the TNRD. Uh, we had it scheduled. We, we've postponed it for the time being, and staff are going to be checking with the TNRD today just to see what the what the directive is about big loads of stuff, because we wouldn't just be taking a pickup truck, we'd be taking a dump truck full of stuff. Right. So we're trying to find out from the TNRD what that looks like for the village, and as soon as we have uh, dates, uh, we will be letting people know when uh, the village can come around and, and pick these things up and take them away for you. Oh, awesome. So what else have we got going on? Um, 
there were a number of new directives last week from the province about the supply chain, the, the province taking that over. Some people seem to be worried that the province is stepping in over their heads. And from what I'm hearing, it's mostly to ensure that some of the small rural communities in the centre and north of the province um, don't see interruptions to their supply chain. I've, I've been hearing from some of the communities up north, further up north than we are, that they're having real difficulties getting uh, getting supplies in. So I think the province is just trying to take steps to make sure that no one no one is shorted, no one no one loses out uh, by say the truckers or the suppliers deciding that they're going to concentrate down in the southern part of the province. Right. So, um, and another thing was about the bylaw process. People are sort of asking, well, you know, what do I do if I see a business open? And I mean, I have to say that that hasn't happened here. I haven't had anyone say, oh, you know, I saw such and such open and they shouldn't be. Uh, and of course, we don't have a bylaw officer in Ashcroft in, in common with a lot of small communities. But we've been talking with the local detachment, uh, RCMP, and they're being absolutely great. And they're saying that if, if you see something that concerns you, call the RCMP and they can go deal with it. Because the last thing anyone wants is, is sort of vigilante action and people taking things into their own hands. Call the RCMP. They're the ones with 40 pounds of gear around their waist. Let them you know, go in. They can usually defuse the situation. But that's not a 911 call. That's a call the detachment itself. That's right. Call the detachment, uh, 453-2216. Uh, so it's, it's, and this is something else I've been hearing. Don't call 911 if you see a group of people hanging out in the park or standing around talking. That's not a 911 call. Um, so, so keep those, those lines clear for the, the real emergencies in the province. Awesome. And how about the village of Ashcroft itself? What's what's happening with, with the village? Well, we've, we've closed the office. Staff are still in the office, although we do have the, uh, the capability now for um, a lot of the staff to work remotely if they have to. But the, the village office is staffed, but the door is locked and people could drop off utility bill payments. We have extended the deadline to get the 10% discount on utility ba uh, bill payments uh, it was March 31st. We've extended it to April 30th right now, so people can, can drop things off there. Um, you can email the village. You can phone the village. If it's something that can be dealt with by email or phone, staff are happy to do that. If it's something that can't be, then staff are happy to talk to you and say, okay, you know, how can we, we, we figure this out? If it means scheduling a meeting, then that's what will happen. Right. Okay. Well, that's that's awesome. And uh, a couple of things, uh, if I can uh, leave you with a couple of teasers here. Oh, please do. Okay, well, I, I, I've got wind of uh, a really exciting event that's coming up in Ashcroft uh, for families to be able to do. It's um, an Easter scavenger hunt. Oh, there you go. And it's coming up in Ashcroft. Look for information uh, online uh, and on the journal website starting on Wednesday. But it's something that families can do. You can social distance, but it'll get you out and about. And there's some really great prizes. <clears throat> so that was one. And another thing, I'm just going to read you something that's kind of interesting. It's a, a, a something that appeared in the Ashcroft Journal. Uh, and it was about a, a pandemic. And it's uh, warning people, keep sick people away from healthy people. Use disinfectants everywhere and wash your hands frequently. Anyone who contracted the illness is being told not to mingle with others for at least 10 days after they're first diagnosed. If your uh, illness is severe, stay away from work for longer than 10 days. Um, they stress the need for cleanliness and ventilation, uh, the safe disposal of anything you've used to blow your nose with. Um, so all of this was in the Ashcroft Journal. All of it is, I think, applicable to the uh, coronavirus pandemic. But this notice appeared in the journal on October 26, 1918. Wow. And it was about the uh, the global um, flu pandemic, sometimes called the Spanish flu, right. which uh, infected, they figure, about 500 million people worldwide and killed between 20 and 50 million people. Wow. What? So this is not something that, that, this is something that we've seen before, and the information that they were circulating in 1918, wash your hands, stay away from people, disinfect everything, that's exactly what we're hearing today. Well, it's amazing how history really repeats itself. I, I um, saw a, a thing saying that there was a Spanish flu in, around 1920, and then another one that happened in 1820. So every hundred years or so, this sort of comes back around. Who was a hundred and eight? She was a few days away.
away from her 109th birthday, living in England. She was born in 1911. She survived the Spanish flu um, pandemic of 1918. So she was born three years before the Titanic sank. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, a year before the Titanic sank, three years before the start of World War One, um, And she has tragically died um, from the COVID-19 virus. Aww. I guess you cannot run at all, can you? No, uh, but uh, that was just uh, interesting to see the similarities between 1918 uh, and today. Oh, for sure. So just a reminder that, you know, keep washing your hands. It was good advice in 1918. It's good advice today. And if, uh, if anyone wants to get in touch with me, please feel free to email me uh, or give me a call. Uh, if I can give you my cell phone number. Of course. It's 250-457-457. 0789 and I'm happy to take calls from anyone who has any questions about the village of Ashcroft and what's happening, what we're doing, etc. And I'd like to, if I can, to leave any ladies who are listening or watching with a piece of advice. Okay. No, ma no matter how tempting it may be, do not try to trim your own bangs. <laughs> So that, and that, that is the voice of experience speaking, not for right now, but that is the voice of experience. So it, it, it might be tempting with, you know, hairdressing salons closed and everything, but don't do it. You will regret it. Well, my, uh, my, my wife is, uh, I'm not a lady, but my wife is starting to want to trim the sides of my head because I'm, I'm starting to get a little crazy going on the sides here. Um, so I, I went out and got a, a razor with adjustable sizing today so hopefully we can do something to tame the mane um but but i'm not i'm not expecting to walk out of that looking really good well i think your bangs look great for what it's oh, worth so oh, I thank you those. <laughs> um last question from me to you uh you are privy to some information out of kamloops is there anything interesting that's happening on the kamloops front about the transfer station which okay. uh, a lot of people were asking about and uh, wondering about that was about that's the only thing out of Kamloops right now I'm hearing uh, they had declared a state of local emergency about 10 days ago but all local states of emergency have now been um, rescinded by the provincial government okay. uh, just because I think what was happening was you were getting sort of a patchwork of, of where you know one jurisdiction had declared a state of local emergency and was maybe locking down and then the next one a few miles up the road wasn't and, and so they just wanted to avoid the confusion from from municipality to municipality so so that uh, that's just a, a big change from the provincial level. Okay. Well, good to know. Thank you very much, Barbara. Okay. All right. And we'll, we'll, we'll try and get you back next week on maybe on Monday again. All right. And keep up the great work. All right. Thanks. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. And you can follow Barbara and everything that she's doing at the Ashcroft Cash Creek Journal uh, Facebook page and website. She also has a Barbara Roden Mayor of Ashcroft Facebook page that you can go to. Um, she has lots of great articles at the uh, Ashcroft Cash Creek Journal um, the bit that I got today about the uh, stuff from Kamloops Eco Depot is from the Ashcroft Cash Street Journal Facebook page. So thank you, Barbara, for keeping everything up to date and stay safe. And we'll hopefully talk with her again uh, next Monday. Now, I get a, did get a text here. Let me just see if it's in relevant to what we're doing. And it is not. Uh, so sorry about that. Um, uh, what do we have here? Okay, so speaking of Ashcroft, we do have a little statement from the Ashcroft Village that came out on March 25th. I'm just going to go over some of these points with you. Uh, so the village office is closed right now. Staff is able to go in. Um, water sewer operations is status quo. Please do not flush disposable wipes. This may back up the sewer system. I talked about this last week. No wipes, no uh, latex gloves. Uh, anything of that nature, just normal toilet paper, please throw everything else in the garbage. A garbage pickup is going on as usual. Playgrounds, of course, are closed. All village facilities are closed to the public. Uh, spring cleanup has been postponed. Uh, the TNR Eco Depot is reduced operations. 
Uh, transit is operational as usual with added precautions. Enhanced cleaning. BC Transit is communicating with staff about social distancing, not collecting fees. If you are unwell, please stay home. So the bus as of March 25th is still running, doing its normal rounds. Um, if you require assistance, please call the office. The mayor will deliver signs you can place in your window, alerting neighbors that you are in need of assistance. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Reminder, campfires or backyard, your backyard burning is not permitted in the village of Ashcroft. Uh, minimum fire department call-out fee could cost you uh, $2,000. So in Ashcroft, campfires or backyard burning is prohibited. Do not do that. Uh, the village participates in daily situation reports teleconferencing hosted by EMBC, and we are monitoring the situation and will enact the emergency measures when required. So thank you, Ashcroft. Thank you, Village of Cash Creek. You guys are doing a fantastic job in amongst this crisis. And I'm sure as things get more and more uh, ramped up that they will both be stepping up more and more to keep us in line. Um, so to just go over the Eco Depot thing one more time here, they are letting you bring yard waste and normal garbage, but do not take construction or renovation waste. No batteries, no used oil, no tires, no electronics and small appliances, no paint and other household hazards wastes, no scrap metal, no propane tanks, no appliances, no mattresses or furniture, and no clothing, clothing donations at this time. Uh, the Interior Health Hospitals would like to just point out that essential visitors only. So if you have someone that is in the hospital, essential visitors only to keep other, to keep our patients, families and staff safe and in keeping with the provincial health officer's recommendations for social distancing, now physical distancing, Interior Health is limiting visitors to essential visits only. This means visits are limited to compassionate care or end of life or critical illness care. Caregivers and support persons for assistance with feeding, mobility, etc. Do not visit if you are sick, if you are experiencing any cough, fever, or other respiratory symptoms, or believe you may have been exposed to COVID-19 or any other respiratory illness. Please do not enter any facility for the protection of our residents, patients, and employees. Thank you. Um, Nature's Gifts in Ashcroft. Temporary new hours, Tuesday to Friday, 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. During these challenging times, we've increased our sanitation procedures and are doing our best to maintain stocked up with all your natural health needs. So thank you to Nature's Gifts for staying open. Um, I do have an update from uh, the school district, or school board, not the school district, but the Minister of Education in Toto. But it's a very long letter, and I haven't gone over it myself personally yet. So what I'm going to do is save this for tomorrow, which we're going to go live again at 4 p.m. Um, and I will have sort of the cliff notes and highlights from this letter to bring to you then. Uh, the reason that we're going live at 4 is because... Uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry and Health Minister Adrian Dix go live at 3, so it gives me a chance to listen to their announcements, get the new totals and numbers for you uh, on a up-to-date basis so we're not a day behind. And yeah, so anyway, that's all that I have for today. Um, tomorrow I will bring to you some more movie recommendations and uh, stuff like that. So if and again, we're going live at four. So if you're at home, you got questions, concerns, just a story to tell, please call in uh, tomorrow and I'll answer all those phone calls then. Thank you for watching. Please share this video, get the word out. There's lots of really good information in these things. At least I hope that you find this information really good. And um, we will talk to you guys tomorrow. I really appreciate you watching. Again, share, like, subscribe, and have yourselves a safe night. We'll see you tomorrow.